So if you're looking for an alternative to Photoshop, but still want all the tools and capabilities that come with that to design world-class graphics and photos, I'm gonna show you a program called GIMP, which is totally free, totally open source, and give you a complete tutorial how to start using it today. Let's jump in. So in order to get GIMP, all you have to do is head over to GIMP.org on your web browser. I'll even put a link in the description to be able to download that from there so that you can access it right away. But what we're looking for is right up at the top, there's a download button, and this will be the newest version. And then what we wanna do is we wanna click on the orange download GIMP directly. We'll just click on that, and it should automatically start downloading into your download folder. And once that finishes, you just wanna open that file up. It should be a setup file. Then you'll select your install mode here. I'm just gonna do install just for me. And then when the setup window pops up here, you just wanna click on install. Once that finishes, you'll have a screen pop up like this that it's completed, and this will pop up as it's loading. And we're just going to click close and bring up the program here. I'm just going to make this bigger so we can all see it. So this is the interface of GIMP. Now, if you are familiar with Photoshop, it'll be a little similar. There'll be some like crossover between those two programs in how it's laid out. But if you're totally new to this and not familiar with Photoshop, that's totally fine. I'm gonna show you step-by-step -step how to use this interface. And we're also gonna be designing a YouTube thumbnail in the process of this. So if you follow along at the end of this, you'll have a working design to be able to use. Over on the side here, there's a bunch of different tools that you can use for moving your image, manipulating it, painting, erasing, just a lot of different tools. And we'll get into that as we go through here. And then here's some further adjustments to the tools that you're on. So when you click on that, these tools change down below here. And then on the right side, we have some different brushes and different types of things that are really designed for if you're using this to paint and draw and craft images in there, which this is totally capable of doing. And some of this, if you're really using this to like create brand new artwork. And down here are some of the overall controls of your image. So what we're gonna do today is we're gonna jump in and start creating a YouTube thumbnail. And through the process of that, I will show you how some of these different tools operate. So in order to get started, you're gonna go up to File and New. So this is to create sort of the workspace or the image that you're gonna start working off of. So at the very top here, they have some templates and you can look through there if there's anything that kind of fits your needs. They have like standard paper sizes or images if you're doing just like photo manipulation. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a brand new one from the image sizes. So again, we're gonna be creating an image for a YouTube thumbnail. So the dimensions of that are 1920 by 1080. And you can adjust this to be by pixels or by inches, millimeters, whatever you want. We want that by pixels. And then you can see here it's showing that it's in a landscape format. And then we'll just click OK. And that creates this workspace. And this is where we're going to be doing the designing that we need in place there. Now, what I like to do whenever I'm designing a project is I like to get all my layers or all the components that I'm going to be using in the design on the page, on the screen, so that I could start manipulating and putting everything together. So I know that one of the main focuses of the thumbnail is going to be my picture. So I'm going to first show you how to import an image. So to be able to import an image, what we're going to do is we're going to head up to File, and then we're going to go Open as Layers. We're going to click on that. And this is sort of an explorer of everything that's on your computer and a preview window. So you're just gonna to navigate to wherever you have those image or picture that you want to import into there. Just gonna to go to our Halfinity folder, go to graphics. And you can see as you click on the image, you can see a preview over on the side of what that looks like. And I think this one right here looks good. And so once you find the photo that you want, you just click on open. So clearly I can see that the photo that I imported onto this image is much larger than the image that we're working with. So first we just wanna get this framed into the right size. So in order to do that, we're just gonna go up to layer, and make sure that we're selecting that same layer. Then we wanna go down to scale layer, and we just want these numbers to match. You can see our width is 6,000. We wanna make this 1920, and then it goes down to 1080 because it's linked, so it's automatically framing that to that size. So we're just gonna click scale, so now we have 
the photo we imported or layer fit to this image size. And then once you have that fit into that size, you could further manipulate the image if you just click on the, the tool over here that's called the Unified Transform tool right here. If you click on that, it brings up these boxes in the corners and on the sides. And if you click on one on the side or top, you can now click and hold that down and drag it to whatever size. You want it bigger, you want it smaller. And then you have further controls if you click on the corner, kind of skews it, that sort of thing. And like anything, if you hit Control Z, it'll undo anything that you just did. Or you can go up to Edit, and you can undo or redo what you want. So we're just going to make this a little bit smaller there for now. And we will be doing some additional manipulation with this image a little bit later. But like I said, I like to get all the layers in place and then start getting everything laid out on the screen. So next, what we're going to do is we're going to add a title. You just want to click on the A for the text tool here. And then let's just pick a color just to start with. We're going to make this black. And then you see here, this is going to be the color of the, of the text. So we just want to click on that. And let's just bring that down to black for now. We can always change it later. But I just want to make sure I can see it. Click OK. And then we're not going to worry about the font right now. And you just want to click generally on the screen where you want the title to start. We can always move it later. And we're going to call this how to make a thumbnail. And you see over here, it made that as a new layer on top of my picture. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to slide this window a little bit over so we can see that a little bit better. So now we have our text. The other element that I want to include on this is a graphic, which in my case is going to be the logo of GIMP that I want to put on there. And so I'm going to show you a different way to import an image. You could do it the same way we did my photo. But we could do that also if you just go to your file explorer, wherever you have your graphic that you want to use. In my case, it's just the GIMP logo. And you can just click that and drag it onto the workspace and release. And you see there, it imports it that way. And again, creates a new layer for that to be. So then we're just going to, again, go up, go up to the Unified Transform tool and just click on the edge and just bring that in to make it just a little bit more manageable size. You gotta click on the middle and bring that over here. We're just going to bring that down in the corner. So there we go. Now we've got some different images, some different elements on the screen that we're going to start working with. So first thing I want to do is I want to cut my image out. I just want my picture on the background so that uh, we don't have sort of this, this bluish gray look in the background. So to do that, we're just going to come over here. We're going to click on my layer again. So now we are on my layer. We can test that by clicking on the image and moving it around. So we know we are on that layer. And then while we have this layer selected, we're just going to head over to the crop tool, which is up here, kind of a little square looking item. Click on that. And we want to make sure we have selected, selected layers only, or else it's going to crop everything. And then all we want to do is we want to come over here with our tool, we're going to box in just kind of around what we want to crop. And you see, I just want to get as close to my image as possible without cutting anything off. And you release, it'll show you a little preview of what that looks like, and then you hit enter. So there you go. It, it now has cropped that image down a little bit better. Now what we can do is we can go over to this magic wand right beside that and while we have that selected, we want to go to Fuzzy Select. So what you want to do with this tool is when you click on an area, you can see this, it might be hard to see on your screen, but you can see this sort of dotted line around this area here that is selecting similar colors of that image. So if you have a solid background, this works pretty well. But you can see it's a little darker over here than it is here. So what we want to do is we want to click on and select multiple parts. So we're going to hold in our shift button on our keyboard. And then we're going to click just below that, kind of get a little bit more, go down here, click that. You can see how we're just increasing that area around this. Then you can see the dotted line comes over here. So we're going to click this darker area, uh, click into there. Got a little bit more on my shoulder. There you go. Now you can see all around me is selected just like that. And then what we want to do is we want to come over here to the side and we want to click on feather edges. And we'll just put that down to about to about 20. 
And what that's doing is going to feather this edge right around my head so it's not as sharp. So now that we have that selected, all we want to do is hit delete. And there you go. Now you can see you got a little bit of a feather on there, which I actually think is maybe too much. So we're just going to hit control Z to undo that. And then I want to adjust this feather to maybe not 20, but let's go to like 10. And we go delete. That's looking better there. Now we go up to this little kind of plus sign movement arrow. And now we can take this and move it over. And you can see a couple of things here is that one, we have this outline still there. So all we want to do is we go up to select and select none. And so what that does is removes that kind of dotted line unless there's something else that you wanted to mask out that way. The other thing that you can see that it happens is, is with the white background, we can see we got a little bit of residual elements there that are kind of still hanging on. So we can go up here to the erase tool, just click on that. And here's where your brushes come in handy is you can select all these different brushes that look, have different patterns or different designs to them depending on what you're doing, right? We just want a solid circle because we just want to erase these elements. So again, we want to make sure that we are selecting that layer and then you want to just erase those parts that were on there. And then if we just click off of that layer so we can see if there's anything else, I see there's still a little bit more. Click on the eraser again, select that layer. I just want to get this part down here. Again, select off of that layer. That's looking pretty good. So now you can see my image is cut out and we can move that wherever we want it to be. All right, now the next thing I want to do is this white background doesn't look good for me. So what I want to do is I want to select the background down here and I want to make that a different color. So we're going to just click the fill tool up here, which is a little bucket. Click on that. And then let's select a different color here. So you can see right now we have this black box here. That's the color we have selected. That's what we use for our text. So we want to click onto that. You could really just sort of select any color you want. I want to go down into the kind of blue area and I like a nice bright blue, maybe a little lighter. And you can see this is the color that we're, we're looking for. So you can kind of slide it around, find the color you like best do kind of a light blue just like that click OK and now we have that new color selected we have this fill we're on our background and we just click on that and it fills the background now we still have a white box around my image so we're just going to click on that and we're going to fill that as well all right so now we have a nice background color there and what I usually like to do with the background is I'll just come over to the layers and just click on this lock box here just so we don't accidentally move that around. All right, now the next thing we want to do, which is something I probably should have done earlier, but uh, no time like the present, is I want to save this just so that we don't lose any of our work. So we're going to go up to File, and I want to go to Save As, and this box will pop up, and then we can navigate wherever we want this. And you just type in what you want to call it, okay, and then click Save. All right, so next what we want to do is, well, I want to do some work on this title here. So again, we go down here, click on the title layer, and go back to the title tools. And I want to make this on two lines. So I'm going to click where I want it to break and then hit enter to put that down on the next line. And then on the justify over here, I just want to make that centered. And then what we want to do is change the font. So while we have that box still selected and then to change the font, you just click on this little box here. And I want to find something kind of bold, big, and then I also want to make that bigger. So we're just going to click on the plus sign here, making the text bigger. That looks pretty good right there. And so, and then I want to change the color. So what we're going to do is we're just going to highlight all this text here. Click on this black box. Maybe I want to make it sort of a red, maybe a deep red in here somewhere. Let's try that one. There we go. That's looking pretty good. Now what I want to do for this text is just to make it stand out a little bit more, I want to add a little bit of a shadow onto there. So while that layer is selected, we want to go up to the filters and I want to go to light and shadow, scroll over to drop shadow. And you can see it already starts, this box will pop up, but you can see it already starts to create that shadow there. So you can see these are all the commands for that shadow, where it's going, the opacity, all of that. So what we want to do is we're going to leave this as a black color 
So first what I want to do is I want to just kind of we're just gonna increase the opacity, just click and drag that, just make it a little bit darker. So then we have the glow radius, maybe we wanna make that a little bit smaller. Then we have the blur radius, which is the amount that it blurs, right? We wanna bring that down so they're just a little bit sharper, a little bit more pronounced. And then you have the path of the shadow, so we can bring it like it so it's closer in, just like that. We want it to be just real, real kind of tight. You just kind of play around with these until it gets to the way you want it. So now I want to fill this spot up here. So we're going to click on the plus sign. We're going to drag it up here. And then we go to this unified transform tool. So click on that. You can see it removes the shadow just so it can render it a little bit quicker. And we just want to drag that down, drag this over, make it nice and big, move it just to where we want that. And then when you hit enter, it puts the shadow back on there. Now we're gonna go to this image here. We have down this GIMP image. I wanna move this up just like that. And I wanna put it right here. Now you see how this is over top of the uh, text. Maybe we don't want it that way. So what we could do is over here on the layers, click and hold on the text and move that on top of there. So now you can see it's going over top of that. If, if you wanna do it that way, okay? We're just gonna return to that graphic there. I want to bring it down here. And again, while we're on that unified transform tool, we can resize it just like that. All right, and I'm pretty happy with that. So we're going to go up here. And again, you should be saving throughout, but we're just going to save one more time here. So then we go up here to file and we go export as. And then in my case, I know I'm going to be uploading this to YouTube. So I need a little bit of a smaller format. So we're going to change that PNG to JPG, JPEG. And then you click on export. And then you have another little dialog box that's going to pop up, ask for the quality and everything to make sure that it's the way you want it. I just recommend leaving those as is and then click export. And you see down here, the file has been exported. And then you can just navigate to wherever you have that file saved, which in my case was in documents. And there is your finished image. And with that, you've created it completely for free outside of Photoshop. I hope you found this helpful and I'll see you in the next one.